Formula One would be nothing without its fans. Fans tune in to keep the championship going, fans even keep the cars cool, but back in 1978, a fan famously found another purpose in F1. That year, F1 was absolutely dominated by the Lotus 79, a car that introduced the world to ground effects and led to championship glory for Mario Andretti and Lotus. But Brabham, looking to find a way to beat the all-conquering Lotus team, found another way of generating downforce with the Brabham BT46B, or the fan car as it's more affectionately known. The fan car was a radical solution to the problem created by Lotus. In typical Colin Chapman fashion, his team had concentrated its efforts on that giant leap forward, as they had done on many occasions in the past. This meant that Lotus had to jump on everybody when it came to developing ground effects but it wasn't exactly without its problems in the early designs. Lotus sank a huge amount of resources into 1977's Lotus 78, but it wasn't as successful as anticipated, with the skirts which were needed to make the side pod wings work requiring further development. It took time to get the skirts right, leaving Lotus to take just five victories that season, leaving them adrift of title rivals Ferrari and only two points ahead of McLaren. Due to this, most of the grid hadn't cottoned onto the Lotus 78's underlying potential. When the 79 arrived, they were all too late and simply left playing catch up. Meanwhile, over at Brabham, they were set to introduce the BT46, a car that had a revolutionary heat exchanger setup, rather than the conventional water and oil radiators ordinarily employed. Just like everyone else in this time period, they were looking for the upper hand on their rivals and thought that this would offer a way to save a considerable amount of weight and clean up the car's aerodynamics. However, having tested the new car, Brabham and their chief designer Gordon Murray had to concede that the panels laid out on the slanted side pod bodywork simply didn't provide sufficient cooling and the BT46 would have to be redesigned. The BT46 was unveiled for the second time at the third round of the championship in South Africa, and the team reverted to a front-mounted radiator arrangement that the car's predecessors had all used, a design that the team had been hoping to ditch. Meanwhile, further radiators were stacked on top of the engine to litter the BT46's previously untarnished rear end. Murray and Brabham had toyed with V-shaped air dams on the cars in previous seasons to create a localised low-pressure region, but he soon worked out that the 78 appeared to be using their full-length skirts with the side pod underwings to create a similar effect, and, crucially, with much more potential. Out came the Lotus 79, a design that ironed out most of the kinks inherent in its predecessor and set the wheels in motion for the rest of the grid to play catch-up. The problem for Brabham and Gordon Murray was that he knew that the car couldn't accommodate the wing-shaped side pod tunnels that were necessary. Unlike Lotus, Brabham used a flat 12 Alfa Romeo engine which filled out a lot of the rear end, and would limit the space available for ground effects. Instead, Murray and co had to think outside the box and decided on a controversial method to equip his B-spec Brabham with even more downforce, equipping the car with a giant fan at the back. Now, there had been a previous example of this before. Jim Hall's Chaparral 2J Can-Am car had been developed in 1970, and the boxy sports car had also employed skirts and fans to create negative pressure under the car before being banned at the end of the year. What's not well known is that another F1 team got there first. Although we have the physical proof that the BT46B existed, the Tyrrell team actually beat Brabham to the punch and tested a fan solution on their 008. The project was shelved after its test at Paul Ricard in 1977, as the team realised they would need to do some serious work to make it race ready and thought they'd be better off improving other aspects of the car. Adding a fan to the Brabham still required adaptation to suit Formula 1's regulations. The main advantage that the Chaparral Can-Am car had over Brabham was they'd been able to use a separate engine to power the rear fans, whereas the BT46B would not only need to run off the Alfa Romeo engine, it would also need to be seen to be cooling it. Having studied the rulebook and consulted with various parties, it was widely accepted that so long as cooling was the primary purpose for the fan on the car, it would be considered legal. Brabham immediately set about making sure that over 50% of the fan's duty was to be considered as cooling for the radiators. Even so, this would leave plenty of margin for the fan to create the necessary suction beneath the car to considerably improve performance. Just as Lotus had issues with their skirts on the 78, Brabham knew that they too would face a similar challenge, and looked for ways to keep the edge of the floor sealed. The team opted for a hinged solution that folded up as the car was sucked to the ground, a phenomenon that could even be seen when the car was stationary. To keep the fan rotating at the right speed, the car had to be driven counterintuitively too with the driver having to add throttle to counter the understeer he'd normally get on corner entry, rather than lift out of the throttle. 
This paired with the potential skirt failure led to a pitot tube being mounted on the car's nose, while an altitude meter was installed in the BT46B's cockpit. On corner entry, the driver would monitor the gauge and accelerate if the gauge was in the green. They would know they would have to slow if a skirt had failed if it was in the red. It was pretty clear early on that the Lotus 79 was the class of the field and would begin to dominate the 1978 season. It wasn't until the Swedish Grand Prix at Anderstorp that the fan car was finally unleashed. Brabham turned up to the race with a bin lid taped onto the fan to hide it, because presumably disguising your car as a bin is a brilliant way to throw other teams off the scent. When it became apparent that the bin lid wasn't part of the car and was actually concealing a giant fan, the rest of the teams were suitably outraged by the BT46B and immediately lobbied for its removal from the event. But having done his due diligence ahead of time, Murray was certain that the governing body would uphold its inclusion. Meanwhile, Bernie Ecclestone, then owner of the Brabham team and executive of FOCA, the Formula 1 Constructors Association, had a rather difficult balancing act on his hands. Worried about the sheer speed of the BT46B compared with the Lotus 79, which at the time was noticeably quicker than anything else, he ordered the drivers to qualify on full tanks and use the hardest compound of tyre. He even went as far as to speak to his drivers, Nicky Lauda and John Watson too, asking them to deliberately underdrive their cars to not show their true pace. So Watson and Lauda qualified over half a second off Mario Andretti, trying to conceal the BT46B's performance. But by the race, Lauda triumphed over Riccardo Patrese by 34 seconds, having forced Andretti into an error in the battle for the lead. Andretti later retired with an engine failure. The BT46B was remarkably quick. Seeing as they'd failed to win the battle to get the car banned on a technical front, the other teams began to voice their concerns over safety. Andretti, encouraged by team boss Colin Chapman, was the most vocal and claimed the car was throwing dirt and stones at the back of the car. It was the same tactic that was used to have the Chaparral 2J removed from Can-Am competition, so it proved to be a worthwhile line of inquiry. But it would be Eccleston who would have the last say as he, knowing that he needed to placate Fokker, agreed to withdraw the car from Formula 1 after the Swedish Grand Prix, before the machine was banned outright. Brabham and Murray had beaten the rule book, but had been beaten themselves by a much stronger enemy, politics. Perhaps this is again an entry for sort of banned but not really, as the fan car wasn't banned, it was withdrawn. Same difference either way I guess, as we've yet to see a fan car on the grid since. There are also rules against movable aerodynamics as well, but maybe with ground effect cars returning to the grid in 2022, one of the teams will try and tack on a secret fan somewhere. One can dream, I suppose. But because of its dominant form and single outing in Sweden, the BT46B fan car holds a mythical status within Formula 1 to this day, remaining the only F1 entrant with a 100% win record. How do you feel about it? Would you like to see the return of fan cars, or would you prefer to see fans stick to the F1 grandstands? Let us know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see us tackle next. And as always, stay tuned for the next episode of Band.